Hey everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Uh, I was not always a big fan of the Distress Oxide inks, to tell you the truth, but then when I figured out how to use them in a way that worked with my own art style, that's when I started to fall in love with them. So to start with, I'm just going to make some very simple, clean, modern cards. I am grabbed a quarter sheet of pink cardstock, and I'm going to take an image from You Should Know and line that up in the upper right-hand corner. And I'm using the Misty because I do not have an inker yet, a re-inker for a, this particular shade of, well, I don't think I have any re-inkers. I better get shopping. <laughs> so it's going to take several impressions um, to get a nice, solid, opaque image there and nice and evenly inked there on the surface. So if you're going to do that, then you might want to use a stamp positioner because it's a heck of a lot easier to stamp over that image twice. Nobody will ever know that you had to stamp it twice to get that nice, uh, deep, saturated color. Now, if you're going to emboss this ink, uh, make sure your pad is well inked. If you don't have a re-inker like me, you could apply uh, embossing ink to the clean stamp first and then apply the Distress Oxide ink, and that will keep that oxide ink nice and wet for the embossing powder to stick to. Anyway, I speed heat set this whole panel because I wanted to continue working, and I didn't want the wet ink to smear it all, so I used my heat gun to speed that up. And then I grabbed these block word dies, and I had to double check to make sure I wasn't lining up those words upside down because I have done that in the past. <laughs> It's not fun to get to this point and go, what? Upside down. So anyway, I'm using a piece of typing paper because once I joined those dies together with uh, some tape, I realized that I still wasn't sure if I was getting it. You know, I was trying to eyeball it and I didn't want to take a chance. So I grabbed a piece of typing paper and just slid that under the edge of the die and it slid under the edge of the die and caught the edge of the blade so that I could make sure as I was lining it up on the grid, those dies were flush with that uh, line. And so it just created a nice um, way for me to square that up, make sure it was nice and straight. So now um, that I've completely die cut this through, and I did put some clean typing paper over the top of this before I sent it through my die cutting machine. And that's because even though I speed set it with the heat gun, sometimes the ink will still transfer to the cutting plate because of that pressure. So some clean typing paper really helps keep that. So when you come with the next project, you're not going to get transfer from the cutting plate onto your next project. So clean typing paper is like a girl's best friend in the stamping room. And then I applied tape runner all over as much as I could. And then to get in the tight spots, I used some glue. Then I went ahead and glued this to an A2 card. This is just Nina Solar White, and I'm going to press down from the back side. In subsequent cards, I'm just showing you how I made the first one, but the others are identical in how I did it. I switched to the quickie glue pen because then I could really get in those tight spots. My mono multi was drying up on me, so <laughs> I was kind of having to work it there on that particular project. But use a glue pen, a tiny glue pen, to get into those tight spots so that they will anchor down nice and firm to your base card. Now I had some overhang there. That's okay. I used my tonic bypass trimmer to just get in there and slice off those little slivers really quick. And then I decided for a, an even more contemporary look. I miss rounded corners. And so I grabbed my corner chomper here. This is the half inch size. And I'm just going to flush that nice and even into the corner and just chomp through all those layers at one time. And I think it adds a really great modern uh, look to these cards. And then I saved all those letters when I die cut them out and I saved all the negative spaces, the innards, you know, for them in a little bowl. And then uh, I'm just going to take the letters themselves and pop them into their respective spots and then use the quickie glue pen to get into the center there. And then I'm going to take the negative spaces of those letters and pop them in where they need to go. So this is going to complete the look um, and make the letters look really finished and give you almost, it looks like they were letter pressed into the paper. So I'm just going to fill those in. And then the trick here is make sure you burnish them down with, uh, I use my Teflon bone folder. So you want to make sure that they're stuck down really well inside there. And so I'm just going to burnish that to make sure they're stuck in there and then let it dry. Let them dry. And then once they are dry, you can kind of bend the card front just a little bit, enough to get under the edge of each of those letters with your tweezers and pop them out. And then once those are out, you've got this nice finished look 
with the letters there. So you don't have a complete, you know, open space there where there should be, you know, for the center of the O and the R um, and the D there. And then as one last uh, finishing touch on these, I actually took my Nouveau drops. You could use those enamel dots by Doodlebug. I love those things too. Um, but I just used some Nouveau drops and made some little rounded, you know, domes there. And then when you slap it against a flat surface, I'm using my hand here, it will flatten those out like those real enamel dots. And you almost can't even tell the difference. Just don't slap so hard that you make them like go concave in the center. <laughs> I've done that before. So easy does it, Tiger. And I think these turned out so fresh and modern. I love them. It's a simple way to create a really pretty and fun, colorful greeting card. Thanks for watching.